For roughly the last 10,000 years, the Earth has had a mild and stable climate. But this was not always thus. When you look back over the previous 100,000 years, Europe was a place of rapid and dramatic climate change, shifting from searing cold to balmy warmth. Just over 40,000 years ago, the first modern humans advanced into this unpredictable northern land. The Ice Age climate rendered vast tracts of the European landscape too cold and dry to permit tree growth. So, in place of forests were vast tracts of grassland and tundra. Plants from these two habitats met, mixed, and eventually covered much of Eastern, Central, and Western Europe. This unique tundra steppe ecosystem thrived as the glaciers advanced and shriveled almost continuously. The tundra steppe was an incredibly rich environment. Although the winters were harsh, the summers were not much cooler than they are today. Unlike the frigid Arctic tundra with its short summers and restricted growing season, Ice Age Europe experienced the same long summers that European latitudes do now. Spring and summer boasted plentiful sunlight and warmth, which encouraged plant growth. At times, Europe and Central Asia resembled the Serengeti, but instead, this was an Ice Age Serengeti. Just as the tundra and grassland plants came together to form the unique tundra steppe habitat, animals from both the north and south colonized this beautiful new environment. For the first time, Arctic creatures like the musk ox, reindeer, and wolves mingled with typically African animals like lions and spotted hyenas. The result was an incredibly diverse mix of animals dominated by large herds of herbivorous megafauna, which the carnivores hunted in packs. The megafauna that still survives in Europe today is very familiar to us. Red deer, caribou, bison, brown bears, and wolves. Other wonderful European monsters, which we are going to present to you, are now totally extinct. One of the true monsters of the Ice Age was the huge cave bear. It was one of the largest mammalian carnivores ever to stalk the Earth, coming close to an Alaskan grizzly bear in size. The cave bear is estimated to have weighed between 880 and 1500 pounds, with the males normally growing to twice the size of the females. To get an idea of their immense bulk, the modern European brown bear usually only gets up to 860 pounds maximum in weight. The cave bear was almost numerous in the west of Europe, although its remains have been found as far east as the Caspian Sea. The cave bear had a stout body and large head with massive canine teeth. Cave paintings show it as having short ears and a pig-like face, making it look like a giant and rather dangerous teddy bear. Despite its immense size, examination of its teeth shows us that it was largely vegetarian, even more so than living brown bears. The cave bear may have included a little meat in its diet by digging up burrowing animals such as marmots and by catching spawning salmon and sturgeon. The woolly rhino probably entered Europe some 170,000 years ago, so it was already a long-term resident of the continent by the time modern humans appeared. It inhabited all of Europe except the ice-bound regions of Scandinavia and the warmer regions of southern Italy and southern Greece. The woolly rhino was a grazing animal, similar in habits to the modern white rhino, but was superbly adapted to the colder climates of temperate and tundra steppe grasslands. The cave hyena, also known as the Ice Age spotted hyena, was a highly specialized animal, with many of its features being more developed than its modern African relative. It tended to prey on larger mammals such as woolly rhinoceros, horses, and steppe bison. The presence of hundreds of large Pleistocene mammal bones accumulating in areas like sinkholes, mud pits, and horizontal caves was largely in part to these predators. The European cave hyena was much larger than its modern African cousin, having been estimated to weigh 102 kilograms or 225 pounds. The European jaguar was distributed from the end of the late Pliocene about 1.5 million years ago, 
and early Pleistocene in Eurasia, and is the earliest known Panthera species in Europe. The uniqueness of this cat is that it could be considered a link between large pantherine cats of the old and new worlds. European jaguars were larger than those found in South America and were therefore probably capable of bringing down larger prey. The European jaguar was probably a solitary animal. It has often been thought to be a forest-dwelling cat with similar habitats to the modern jaguar. The aurochs or wild ox was the ancestor of all European breeds of domestic cattle and it survived long after the Ice Age ended. The modern cattle are mere pygmies compared to the aurochs, which stood almost seven feet tall at the shoulder. The bulls were much bigger than the cows and had longer horns that pointed forwards rather than sweeping out to the side, as we see in modern cattle. The aurochs likely inhabited forests and open scrubland, so they were more numerous during the warmer phases of the Ice Age. Ancient Greek and Roman writers helped shed light on the behavior of the aurochs by telling us that it was a very aggressive animal, with herd members cooperatively using their great size to defend themselves from predators, much as the African buffalo does today to ward off large predators such as lions. The giant deer is sometimes referred to as the Irish elk, although it must be noted that it's not an elk at all. The giant deer ranged right across Eurasia from Ireland in the west, through to Siberia and China in the east. Its remains have also been found in North Africa. Similar to the woolly rhino, it was probably absent from the southern regions of Europe. The name giant deer comes from its hefty size. It weighed up to 1,000 pounds and stood roughly 7 feet tall at the shoulder. So, in terms of height, it was roughly equal to a moose, but a little more lightly built. The European Cave Lion, also known as the Eurasian Cave Lion and Steppe Lion, belongs to the extinct Panthera genus. The species became extinct in the late Pleistocene period, about 13,000 years ago. Standing 5 feet tall, measuring 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters in length, and weighing more than 318 to 363 kilograms or 700 to 800 pounds, the cave lion was the largest cat that has ever existed, larger than modern lions of today and slightly bigger than tigers. In addition to being equipped with 20 retractable, sharp claws on each foot, the cave lion also had bone-crushing teeth and a bite force of over 1,800 pounds, twice the strength of a modern lion's 900-pound bite force. These cave lions also lacked manes like the eastern subspecies of the modern beasts. European Ice Age Leopard, or Late Pleistocene Leopard, is a fossil leopard subspecies, which roamed Europe in the late Pleistocene. The youngest known bone fragments date to about 32,000 to 26,000 years ago and are similar in size to modern leopard bones. Its skull was medium long and its characteristics are closest to modern Persian leopards. The only known description of this leopard in the Chauvet Cave shows a coat pattern similar to that of modern leopards. It is unclear if the spots were organized in larger rosettes, like in modern Persian leopards. Fossils of small female leopards can sometimes be confused with large male lynxes. Hippopotamus antiquus, sometimes called the European hippopotamus, was an extinct species of hippopotamus that ranged across Europe becoming extinct sometime before the last ice age, at the end of the Pleistocene epoch. At an average weight of 3,200 kilograms or 7,040 pounds, the Hippopotamus antiquus was larger than the modern common hippopotamus. The European cave wolf was first described by George August Goldfuss in 1823, based on a wolf pup skull found in the Zulathan cave. Located at Galenruth, Bavaria, Germany, the wolf possibly belongs to a specialized late Pleistocene wolf ecomorph. Its bone proportions are close to the Canadian Arctic Boreal Mountain Adapted Timber Wolf and a little larger than those of modern European wolf. It appears that in the early to middle late Pleistocene, this large wolf existed all over Europe. 
but was then replaced during the last glacial maximum by a smaller wolf type, which then disappeared, along with the reindeer fauna. Finally replaced by the Holocene warm period European wolf Canis lupus lupus, these wolves have not been well studied, nor have they been well defined by DNA. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.